Damn spot. I almost just chunked him. I believe he's a keeper. Twelve thirty-five. We gotta be back in at three. And I've got two fish, a twelve inch spot, and a fifteen inch large mouth. We're going way in the back of Seal Creek now. We're gambling. May not may not work out, but I had to try something. I'll check in with y'all way in. See them all? Yeah, I see them. Too long, dude. I think you're gonna make it. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. That's right. Yeah, man.
definitely cool. Kyle Welcher, Kyle 13 6 on day number one. How we doing, Kyle? We're doing good. You know, this is a phenomenal lake. I just haven't seemed to be able to crack the code for this thing. I, it was tough on me this week. It's full of three pounders. I only caught one in two days, so that's my problem. Get him next time, my friend. Always good to see you. 9 15, 9 15 for you, Kyle. John All right, what's going on? This is obviously not the day of the tournament, but I had some time to think about what I did wrong in the tournament. And I think based on the information that I had to start the tournament, obviously a after the end of the tournament, I have more information than I had and with the decisions I made. So starting day two, with the amount of information I had, I think I probably made the right decision as to where to start and what to do. I could have pulled the plug a little earlier on my upriver stuff and probably saved an hour. And that would have gave me more time to maybe get down and mess around in the main lake before I went into straight panic mode. So if I would have done that and got down that main lake and then you know started fishing some different stuff out in the better quality areas of the lake, I probably could have caught a couple fish and that would have saved me from ever having to just run way back in that creek and catching a limit. But whenever I ran back in that creek, I had a two pound large mouth. It was actually like a two and a quarter probably. And then I had a 12 inch spot. So literally I had two fish for like three pounds. So I had to go catch five. I had to go catch three more, like quick. So I, I ran in that creek, got in there at probably like 12:50, one o'clock. I really started fishing, and by like 2:05, I had I had a limit, and I had to be had to check back in. I think at three o'clock. So at 2:05, I had five. Then uh, I really ran back out of there, got out on the main lake, and flipped a couple green trees, and obviously called twice. So that's not a way to win. And I knew that going into this tournament, that flipping on that main river was not going to win. But I thought. I could catch 14 a day easily and I thought that if I had one big bite then I'm you know looking at like a top 20 and if I had two big bites I'm looking at top 12 that did not happen um, the weights were a lot lower than I actually anticipated so my practice was different than I thought I thought it was gonna take my, my practice shallow was actually better than I thought I thought it was gonna take a lot more weight to get a check make the cut and win obviously I was wrong so that's the price you pay. If I would have known how good I was actually doing fishing shallow in practice, I would have spent more time finding brim beds, finding more shad spawn, and then I wouldn't have spent near as much time graphing deep. I graphed deep for the second half of Monday, all of Tuesday, and all of Wednesday, for pretty much. I would fish for a shad spawn for like an hour, for about two hours, and then graph deep the rest of the day till almost dark. And I will mix in some looking for brim beds. But basically, I committed to fishing deep for a lot of the days of practice because I thought I had enough shallow. Obviously, that was incorrect. But I'm gonna show y'all what I did shallow. Basically, I ran around and flipped. That's my style. And I always use the same exact type of rod for flipping. This right here is a seven foot heavy. This actually is not the bait I was using a lot of the times, but this is just a little beaver that I have on right now. And uh, I don't know, I, I guess I kind of like flipping too much. It kind of caught me off guard, but this is a half ounce hog tech tungsten. 5 volt Trocar TK-130, I have it pegged. This is 20 pound K-9. I've been fishing with this stuff for this 20 pound line for probably three months, four months now. And I, not this same exact spool, but I've been flipping a ton and I have not broke off yet. So I know on the Table Rock video of day two, it looked like I broke off. The knot actually came untied, which first time I've ever had that happen. It act like not came untied, my snail knot did. So that is a mistake. But Shimano Corrado 70, XG 8.2 to 1 gear ratio. It's a 7 foot 6 heavy fast rod. That's the rod I use a ton. And you can actually see people who fished with me, you know, years ago or saw me fish, you know, a long time ago, I used to set the hook a lot harder than I do now, especially flipping. So you can see almost all the fish I lose flipping, I snatch them out of the water to the boat. When they hit the water, I lose them. So when you have this snail knot on, 
all you want to do is reel down and then apply constant sweeping pressure more I still hit them pretty hard but you want to hit hit them with a, just an increase of constant like a big hard sweep and let that snail not move if you really jerk them you'll pull them out of the water and then the fish will come off a lot of times so almost all the fish I've been losing flipping they've been out of the water almost to the dang boat but this is my favorite way to fish without a doubt I mean they they always bite it it's hard you know one of these days flipping is gonna actually win a tournament I'm in and then I'll be good but it ain't happening yet and it's never happened so far okay so primarily for the first two hours of every day I would throw this white speed crawl so I mean white swim jig and it has a ultravive speed crawl trailer on it this is pearl color so it's just a white swim jig got a big hook on it and 50 pound k9 nine strand braid the nine strand is thinner than the eight strand so if you're going to order uh like from K9, you should know that if you if you're going to be punching or frogging, I would recommend the uh, eight strand 60. It's a lot thicker. It's a lot stronger. The this is more like a 50. The six the nine strand 60 is more like a 50 pound braid. If you want 50, this the 60 pound nine strand is good. But this is what I would throw first couple hours every morning. Caught some on on day one. I think I caught some on it both days. I just didn't have any keepers on on day two. But seven foot three medium heavy fast. This ducket rod is the one I'm throwing on. These rods, the ducket 7'3 medium heavies, have a little bit more power than most medium heavies, in my opinion. Have a little bit less tip and a little bit more backbone than most medium heavies I've used. Now, the other thing that way to fish in on is old wacky rig. They're postponed. Obviously, you know, some fish are going to be still eating this thing. I went to the back of that creek and I saw a bunch of fish cruising and I pulled this sucker out of the rod box. I just thought this is a 7 foot medium fast. You know spin rod this has a 15 pound braid tied to eight pound canine fluorocarbon so basically i saw fish back there cruising so i pulled that out and i caught my fourth keeper of day two on that so i actually i saw a 13 incher sitting over there and i was like i'm gonna throw to him anyway so i threw over to him and a 15 incher came out of nowhere and ate the wacky rig and i caught him so hey it worked out like that sometimes and whenever i left that creek i was on the way out me and my co-angler was fishing out and we saw a wolf pack of four 15 inches swimming down the bank and I said man look at all them bass and I pitched straight to it and that, that was my one that I caught that was my fifth one before I started culling so I pitched over to it and I caught one it ate it, ate it, ate it instantly so that was a cool way to do it but in this tournament you could really tell that I was fishing differently I didn't uh I didn't have my normal like flow to me you could tell I was kind of off mechanically I was kind of doing weird the fish were hitting the carpet a lot I wasn't really doing stuff I didn't look like my normal self anyways so I could feel it while I was fishing. I was a little bit more sluggish than usual. I guess I was just a little bit burnt out from like 14, 15 hour practice days. I'm thinking, that's, that's a nightmare really. I mean, I like being out there, don't get me wrong, but 14, 15 hours out there in the sun will get you. But anyways, I really would like to have an off day in between practice and tournament, an off day where nobody can fish. If, if they allow you to fish, I'm always gonna do it. But them bunch of days in a row just gets you a little bit burnt out. But now I'm ready to go back fishing getting on my ledge baits ready hope y'all like this uh video as always leave a like leave a comment hit the subscribe button i will see y'all next time appreciate you guys watching